Hi, this is Federico. And in this video, I'm going to answer a question or a suggestion that was posted to us on Facebook about how do I make a project like one of the ones here on the screen in Cuddle. So the idea is that you would make a template that has some text elements that you can easily change uh, to make one of these uh, either ornaments or name tags. And by making it into a template, you would save a lot of time because the text elements can be easily changed. Or you could make a template that you could share with other people. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples and uh, hopefully that will get you, uh, you know, making your own cuddle templates. So I'm going to try the bottom left example. So I'm going to go here to the left and create a new component and by clicking the plus sign. And I'm going to start with the outside circle. That would be the outside cut by dragging a circle from the left hand side. So I'm going to scale it to four inches. Um, this can always be changed later, but I'm going to start with something like that. And I'm going to uh, start by placing the text elements. So first text element is going to be the uh, one in the center. So I'm going to search for text here to find some text uh, components. So I'm going to use the basic one for this one. So I'm going to place the basic text here in the center. I'm going to change the alignment to center and the vertical alignment to middle. And the example that we saw um, was a zip code. So let's just type a zip code as an example here. And uh, then uh, I'm going to add the sort of circular text that was on the top. So let's search again for text. And I saw an element that says text around the circle. So I'm going to place that one here in the center. And that's very close, but it's not exactly what I want. So I'm going to change the size of the circle itself um, by clicking here on the scale. So I'm going to change the circle around which the text uh, it's kind of following. So let's make that one about 3.2. And then I'm going to go back to the text along path and change the size of the text to something that kind of makes sense. So 32, 30 points. And I'm going to uh, change the text here so I know what I'm uh, looking at. So text on top. And we had another another element at the bottom, another text element. So I'm going to grab here the text around circle at the bottom. So it's flipped. So once again, I want to uh, select that circle scaling here, and I'm going to scale it down to the same 3.2, I believe. And then I'm going to select the text along path and change that size as well. So I know that that one now is selected again. And that, now that that one is the text at the bottom. This is just from my own reference. Um, so I think we're getting there. Um, and this one also had a couple of additional design elements. So there were some lines um, and an inside circle. So um, let's add the inside circle first. So I know that I want the outside circle to be a cut. So to stay organized and to be able to transfer it to my laser cutter, I'm going to change the color of the stroke. So I'm going to say that the color of the outside cut is going to be red. And then, um, Let's say I want all the text to be engraved or uh, scored. So I'm going to change the text colors to purple. So it makes it into a different operation. So I'm going to each one of these and changing the stroke color to purple. Same as this one. Oop. Purple. And so let's make the other elements uh, black. So I'm going to place the decorative circle here again. I'm going to change the scale. So it's just around something like that. And then uh, we also had some lines. So I'm going to use a rectangle as a, as a guide. So I'm just going to place it here on my text. And then yeah, I think about that size, actually three inches makes sense to me. So that's centered, that's where I want it, I place it in the center. And so I'm not, I don't want to cut this rectangle, I'm just going to select it and turn it into a guide by going here and changing guides. So show shapes as guides. A guide means that it won't be cut, it's simply a sort of a ruler or helper geometry that I can use. And I place that there so I could just make the lines that are those decorative elements 
with the pen tool here. I'm going to place another line with the pen tool. And I'm done. So I'm going to actually hide that rectangle so I can see. So I think this is the basic idea. But as you can see, it's a little bit tedious. Every time I need to change all this text, I, I need to go here fishing for where the text is. But there is an easier way. So let's go look at it. So if I select the center text, I know I can change it right here. But I want to turn that into, an, into a, a variable or a sort of a parameter. So if I go to the three dots here on the right, and click on it, there is an option that says extract as parameter. So I'm going to click on that one. And that kind of makes it into something I can change right here. So it lets me rename it. So I'm going to, I'm going to call it center text for my own organization. And as you can see, what happened here is that now I can actually change this number. I'm going to make up another zip code. Uh, so I can easily change it here regardless of whatever is selected in the editor. And so we can go ahead and do the same with the other uh, chunks of text. So I have the text on top. So here is this text on top. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to click on the three dots, extract it as a parameter. I'm going to call it the top text. Um, and so, you know, now we can change it here in the same fashion. Let's see how to like home sweet home. And then we'll do the same with the text at the bottom. So I selected the text at the bottom. I'm going here to the right, click on the three dots, extract as a parameter. And now I have the bottom text. Um, I don't know where that zip code is, but I'm, um, I'm assuming it's nearby. So now that we have the different text pieces of text here, um, the cool thing is that we can look at it on the readme. So the README uh, is an option here that kind of gets rid of all the editor stuff. So I'm going to go here. It's also a place where you can write notes for your project. So uh, I can write simple text like, you know, this is my ornament. But even better than that, uh, whenever I, I press Enter, uh, I can see that there are different options. And I can add a component. And so the component that I created here is the A. Uh, we can also rename that. And now we have a very simple interface to change all the, you know, the things that we uh, added to this one. So we can, again, change the zip code. Um, and then we can change um, the, the text in the other pieces. And then we have a really easy way to download it here as an SVG. Um, so you can always change all those different things and uh, get your file right away. So this is the first example. Um, of course, there are many other things you can add to this list of uh, changeable elements. So one obvious one would be, for example, the font. So if I go back here to the editor view and I select the center text, you'll see that there's a font option for that text. And just as we added the other parameter by clicking on the three dots, we can do the same here. We can click on the three dots and extract that as a parameter. So that would be the font choice. And as you can see, if I change the font here, it will change that font. And if I look at the readme, um, I will see that the font is there to be changed. So this is the basic idea for creating a template that you can use for yourself or that you can share it with other people. And remember, if you need to share it, you need to go here to the share option and there are a few options here. So you can share it as unlisted. And then if you, se if you select that, you can copy the link to the project. And if you make it public, then other people will see it in the Explore page. So um, I think this is good. Let's try another example just to sort of reinforce the ideas. And let's try something like this one. It might go a little bit faster because I'm going to be repeating some of the same elements, but I kind of want to give you um, a sense for the possibilities. So because this one kind of works as its own project, I'm actually going to create a new project file. So I'm going to go to File and select New. But we roughly know what we're dealing with here. So I want to make that sort of elong elongated tag. So I think the uh, easy way to make it is I'm going to search for a shape here that I think kind of makes sense. I think if I, tr if I make a trapezoid, 
Um, so I'm going to grab my trapezoid, I'm going to rotate it, I'm going to place it here in the center, and I think something like uh, 2 by 1.75 kind of makes sense to me. So I'm going to place it there, I'm going to duplicate it, I'm going to rotate it, you'll see where I'm going with these. So I think that's kind of like a, a tag looking element. Um, and then I'm going to place a circle to give it a, that kind of rounded look. And I'm going to be very loose here with my shape, just kind of approximate something that looks about right. I want that circle to be at the center. And I think that that looks roughly the way I want it to look. So I'm going to select these shapes and apply a Boolean union so that, you know, gets them all together. And then I want to round those corners. So I'm going to select it and apply the round corners modifier. So it's looking very much like a little tag. And then again, to stay organized with the different colors, I'm going to select it and I'm going to change the stroke of that shape to red because I want that to be cut. And then once again, I want to place a text uh, element in the middle. So I'm going to search for text. And I'm going to use a slightly different one here that can, could be useful to you. So there's this one called fit text. And the difference with this one is that uh, any text that is uh, written here in the text uh, section is going to is going to always be inside of the rectangle that we choose. So because I know that I want to sort of fill this rectangle, um, that's where it's going to stay. So whatever I, I write, I could write something like, I'll make it cut. If I write my name, and as long as it gets, it's always going to stick to that rectangle that we have selected. So that could be useful to you if you don't want to be messing around with text sizes and just stick it to the same place. So actually, let's, let's try something different. So we have that text element. Then we want the other text elements around. So let's start with the text around the circle. And so this example is to show you that it doesn't have to be a precise circle. In this case, I made this a sort of ellipse or a sort of elongated circle. So I could change that shape. I could, I could um, kind of deform it by, by uh, using the handles. So it fits roughly, you know, around the ellipse I created. So um, it's called text around the circle, but it doesn't have to be a precise circle. It could be an ellipse. So let's change the size. Um, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, another thing that I would suggest is that sometimes you want your fonts to be engraved and sometimes you want them to be scored, which is much faster. And in order to do that, there is uh, an option called single line fonts. So if I choose one of those, um, you'll see that my font is a single line. Actually, let's make it, let's bring it down so it's not touching the edge. Um, so this could be useful to you, and because you might want that to be a different operation, I'm going to give it a different color as well. Let's choose um, sort of blue for those. Uh, so we have the top text, and then let's try the bottom one. So that's the same operation. I'm going to grab the bottom one, and I'm going to uh, deform that shape where that determines the where the text goes. So I'm being very loose here. I'm going to place it here in the center. And I'm going to change the font size so it kind of accommodates around that. Um, and this one is at the bottom. And let's say I want that to be a little smaller. I'm showing you how, but I'm sure you're going to come up with better design elements. This is like my quick example. Um, so let's say we want that to have the same score font. I'm going to change the color of the stroke to the blue. And then finally, let's turn it into a template. Um, so uh, same as we did before, I'm going to select the center text, and I'm going to extract that as a parameter by clicking the three dots here. So that's my top text or the center text. Maybe not everything needs to be caps lock, center text. I'm going to extract the top one as a parameter. 
I rename it, and I'm going to extract the bottom one as a parameter as well. So now if I go back to look at the readme, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add that component I created. I only created one. And now we have the basic idea here. So I can I can change the winery uh, to a creamery. Let's use caps lock. And then I can also change that text and I obviously can change um, the bottom one. So So this is how you create two different types of text-based templates where you can easily change the parameters. Um, of course, there are many other things to make it better, but I hope this is helpful and it gets you on your way for creating your own projects. Thank you for watching.